Okay, I want to be able to give you guys the opportunity to take a look at a couple extra basic probability exercises. So here we go. Hopefully these are nice and simple and will help you out. All right, in a sample of 350 students, 250 eat breakfast. Of those that eat breakfast, 100 eat pancakes and bacon, 42 eat pancakes but no bacon, and 30 eat neither. What is the probability that someone eating breakfast eats pancakes or bacon? What is the probability that someone eating breakfast eats pancakes or bacon? All right, so let's make sure that we understand this. The Venn diagram here represents the students that eat breakfast. Okay, if you are in this area, you eat breakfast. Now, we were told that 100 eat pancakes and bacon. So first off, let's have the left circle here be for pancakes. And let's have the right circle here be for bacon. Okay. Now, 100 eat pancakes and bacon. That's going to be the overlap right here in the middle. 100 kids eat both. 42 eat pancakes but no bacon. Okay, that is very, very specific. That is pancakes but no bacon. So those 42 kids would be over here in this area that is bacon only, no pancakes. I'm sorry, pancakes only, no bacon. All right, 30 eat neither. Neither is going to be these 30 students on the outside. Those 30 students on the outside, again, they don't do either. They don't have pancakes or bacon. That's why they're on the outside. So now we have to figure out a couple things here. The first thing is, how can we figure out what is left here for the kids that eat only bacon, right? So let's kind of, let's make a list of what we know. For example, we know that the probability that you like pancakes and bacon and, and make sure that you understand that I could do this is the probability of pancakes upside down you bacon so pancakes and bacon is 100 students out of 250 that eat breakfast okay the probability that somebody likes pancakes okay well i i know this as well my spelling is terrible the probability that somebody likes pancakes that's the entire pancake circle that is 142 now again some of those kids also like bacon but the the idea is if all i care about is pancakes well 142 out of 250 like pancakes all right the probability that somebody likes bacon this is what i don't know because i know that 100 kids like bacon then also like pancakes but i don't know what the bacon only is and the idea is i need to use the fact that i know that there's 250 kids okay if there's 250 students take away that eat breakfast take away the 30 that are neither that leaves me with 220 students boy am I making a lot of mistakes 220 students that like either pancakes or bacon so I've actually already answered my question the probability that somebody likes pancakes or or bacon, remember you means um, or, is 220 out of 250. Now this should make a lot of sense, I hope. Remember, the opposite of neither is one or the other. Think of it on a really simple scale. If I have a blue marker or a red marker, if I have neither, I don't have either one of them. The opposite of neither is you have at least one. So you can either have the blue, the red, or both. So the opposite of 30 would be the 220 kids that I like bacon or like pancakes. Now, they might only like bacon. They might not like pancakes. They might like both. But regardless, 220 kids like one or the other. So make sure that you understand that or means pancakes or bacon or even both because the 100 kids that like both are going to raise their hand too. So, how can I figure out this leftover part? Well, if I take 220 and I subtract 42 and then I subtract 100, I'm left with 78. Okay? Don't believe me, just check that out. 220 minus 42 minus 100 leaves me with 78. So, 78 kids like bacon only, no pancakes. So, the probability that somebody likes bacon, the entire circle for bacon, would be 178 out of 250. So, we now know and is 100. Pancakes is 142, bacon is 178, and neither is the 30 right here. So another way of getting the or, in case you really want to make sure you understand how to use that formula, the probability of pa uh, pancakes or bacon would be pancakes, which is 142 out of 250. Look at the pancake circle, 142 kids in there, plus bacon, 178 out of 250. Look at that bacon circle, there's 178 kids in there, minus the 100 over 250, that's the overlap. So 142 
plus 178 minus 100 is 220 out of 250. So the 220 kids like pancakes or bacon. 30, that's the neither. Those are all the kids on the outside. So that's why these Venn diagrams are really nice because they allow us to see all kinds of probability when we see those four numbers in that picture there. Let's take a look at another example here. There are 35 students in Mrs. Ortiz's pre-calculus class. One day, 24 students turn in their homework and 14 turn in their test corrections. Eight of those students turn in both homework and test corrections. Suppose we, ran, we randomly select these students from the class. All right, first we want to make a Venn diagram. H is homework, C is test corrections. So I'm going to make a nice big circle here for homework, and that is a pretty ugly circle, I apologize, and I'm going to make another overlapping circle. How do I know they overlap? Because it did say some kids turned in both, so I know that, that these um, definitely overlap, which means they're not mutually exclusive, and those were test corrections. Okay, now, 24 kids turned in their homework. That means the entire homework circle is 24. The entire test correction circle would be 14. The kids that turned in both were eight of them. So eight students turned in both. So right smack dab in the middle is going to go the eight students that turned in both. All right, now, to figure out over here, this is homework only, no test corrections. Well, 24 kids turned in their homework, and eight of them did also their test corrections. So that leaves me with 16 over here. That way the entire circle for homework is 24. 16 kids turned only their homework in, not their test corrections. Eight turned in both. 14 kids turned in their test corrections. That means the entire circle for text test corrections would be 14, which leaves me with six kids over here that did only their test corrections but didn't turn their homework in. Okay, so there's my 24 kids that turned in the homework. There's my 14 kids that turned in their test corrections. Okay, now if I add up those numbers, right, 16 kids did homework only, 6 did test corrections only, plus 8 did both. 16 plus 8 plus 6. I get 30 kids. That means 5 kids out here did neither. 5 kids didn't turn in anything. Hopefully that makes sense. So let me show you how we could use the formula to have this make a lot of sense. The probability of homework or test corrections, homework or test corrections is homework. 24 out of 35 kids did their homework, plus 14 out of 35 kids did their test corrections. However, I do need to subtract away the 8 out of 35 who did both, because those 8 kids got counted for homework and for test corrections. It's not fair they get counted as both. Add all those together, then subtract away, I get 30 out of 35, which means 30 out of 35 kids did one or the other, right? They did test corrections, or they did homework, or maybe they even did both. I don't know. But what I do know for sure is that five kids did neither. So that's the outside part. That's the kids that did neither. So five out of 35 kids did neither. So hopefully you understand how to find with the Venn diagram. So B says, what's the probability that it's somebody didn't do either, or did neither homework nor test corrections? it'd be 5 out of 30 would be the probability, 5 out of 30, okay? All right, one last problem to go here. Below is a two-way table that describes responses of 120 subjects to a survey in which they were asked, do you exercise for at least 30 minutes four or more times per week? That's yes or no. And what kind of vehicle do you drive, sedan, SUV, or truck? All right. First, there are a tons, a whole plethora of questions I can ask you with the two-way table, but one you need to understand is what two things are mutually exclusive here? Exercise or not exercise. Those two events, do you exercise, do you not exercise, are mutually exclusive because you can't do both. You can't say yes and no at the same time. Same thing with car type, sedan, SUV, truck, those are all mutually exclusive. You cannot have all three. Now, maybe in some world you could have all three of those, but remember, one car, one car that you currently own cannot be a sedan, an SUV, and a truck all at the same time. They've got to be separate. However, exercising in sedan, there's some overlap there. Those are not mutually exclusive. There are 25 people who actually exercise and also have a sedan. So make sure you understand the idea of mutually exclusive. So let's talk about the probability that you exercise. So what's the probability that somebody exercises? Well, 52 people exercise out of 120. How easy was that? You're done. What's the probability that somebody has an SUV? Well, 39 people have an SUV out of 120. You're done. Very, very, very simple. All right. What's the probability that you have an SUV or a truck? 
Okay, now this is OR. Now, to find OR, I'm going to start with SUV. How many people own an SUV? 39 out of 120. Plus, how many people own a truck? Oh, 36 out of 120 on a truck. Now, there is no way that you could own both a truck and an SUV. So I do need to subtract away that probability of both, but the probability of both is zero. Zero people own both a truck and an SUV, so it's very easy to do here. I don't have to worry about that overlap because there isn't any. So it would be 39 plus 36, which is 75 out of 120. So 75 out of 120 people own a truck, I'm sorry, a truck or an SUV. Okay. Now, what about the probability that you, um, yes, you exercise or you drive a sedan? Okay, what's the probability that I randomly pick somebody who exercises or drives a sedan? So, do you exercise? 52 people out of 120 said yes, that they do exercise. Do you drive a sedan? Okay, well, 45 people out of 120 drive a sedan. But there is some overlap here. There are these 25 people right here that were counted as yes, they exercise, and yes, they have a sedan. Those people deserve to be counted, but not twice. So, I'm going to subtract away those 25 people out of 120. Now, again, up here it was zero because nobody had an SUV and a truck. But for this next problem, there were 25 people that exercised and owned a sedan. So I'm going to go ahead and take 52 plus 45 minus 25, that was the overlap, and I get 72 out of 120. So that's a very easy question to understand, that there are some very basic probability questions I can ask you in here, and I could also get a little bit more complicated with the ORs. Don't forget, I could also say, what's the probability you drive a truck and you don't exercise, and you don't exercise. Now, this is very, very specific. There's no formula for this. You just need the chart. Truck and no, you don't exercise. There are 24 people who meet that exact verification, that exact definition there, okay? So you have to understand that if I just say sedan, I'm being very, very, very exact. 45 people own a sedan. If I'm just talking about exercising, I'm being very, very exact. 52 people exercise. If I'm using an and, if I'm using the word and, I'm also being very exact truck and said no. It's very exact, 24 people. It's when I'm talking about or that things can get a little bit tricky. Or would be the first or the second minus any overlap if there is any. So make sure that you understand how I did that for those two or examples. When you're talking about neither, it's very, very simple as well. You just got to add up everybody that doesn't make you happy, right? So if I say you don't own an SUV, nor do you exercise. So that means that SUV is out and exercising is out. So you'd have to go through your data and count up how many people um, are against that. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. It's pretty easy. Just make sure you keep in mind that some probabilities are very specific and some are or. And when you're working with or, things can be a little bit tricky, but you just have to make sure to get rid of any overlap.